Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this one, I'm sort of gonna pick it up from where we were last time. And I'm also gonna keep this real time. I thought it was quite a nice format to just record while I work. Um, it saves me a bit of time. And um, yeah, what this is, is basically, uh, we're gonna use this car which we built in the last episode and just put it into a scene. And I wanna, I wanna actually um, keep this quite loose and just kind of show you the early processes of um, you know how I set up a scene and this is actually quite new to me too I normally build a lot more in 3d and then just paint the details but what I'm gonna do in this one is more just set up some really basic um, 3d sort of landscapes and then do all of it in painting instead so we're not going to bring anything into detail in this episode. Maybe we do that in the next one. Um, and what we have here, this is actually one of the early shots of my film where the two climbers are arriving in sort of a mountain landscape and they are racking up, bringing out their gear. So I'm going to animate characters here as well. And maybe that's also an upcoming episode, who knows. Um, but what is this here? How do I, date, how do I make this scene? Um, well, we have, we have a lot of what's called landscape objects, which are these guys. And it's nothing fancy at all. It's it's just like something that you can, it's like a little mountain, which you can change the uh, scale of. And um, you can actually set the seed in here to change different types of landscapes, which is cool. And I'm making them all really flat. And why I do this is because instead of using just normal planes, for a ground plane, uh, it adds a bit of, you know, it adds a bit of depth to it. So if I, if I have a several of these, and then a low camera angle here and a little bit of height on them, you know, you get a bit of um, sort of a variation to your ground plane. So let's see what we got. So all these are just landscape objects with a texture on them, and the texture is very basic. It's just some um, like grass texture, um, dirt texture that I've painted. Um, my Patreon has access to these guys. And um, yeah, then I made a camera and put out some of these to sort of create a nice composition. Uh, and also some stones just to get a little bit of depth. Why I use the textures is actually without them, you would, it would be very hard to tell the actual depth. So if I take these out, um, these textures here, you will see that it's really hard to say how high up is the camera from the ground. But if they're there, you can sort of see how how the um, sort of depth is laid out. So let's jump over to Photoshop. So this is the render that I came out of Cinema 4D. And yeah, let's get started here. So we're just going to do some painting here. And um, let's start by, actually, let's put a color layer and make a black, make it fill it black and put it to color. And that makes it everything black and white. And it's a little bit easier to work that way when I'm just focusing on the composition, which is what we're gonna do in this episode. And then let's make another layer, put it below and fill it with white. That could be our sky. And let's put another layer underneath and maybe some kind of what color is this. Okay, it's quite a dark gray. So if we put it somewhere here, maybe we can start messing around and see if we can create some, maybe some mountains. You know, I want, I want mountains, but I don't want like these type of mountains here because we have quite a zoomed lens. So I'm thinking, you probably have something quite large up here. You know, a bit like this maybe. And the brush I'm using here is actually from um, Dave Greco. It's a really nice, really nice paintbrush. And um, he's got an awesome YouTube channel. So check that out as well. Shout out to him. And let's take another dark, that's way too dark something like that maybe and um, let's just put some lines in this so we get a bit of kind of directional lines 
and what you can be you can be quite clever with with this and try to make these lines you know create a focal point for us so if we have the car here which is obviously what we want to see then we can make sure that the texture of the mountain is actually sort of uh, looking towards that Now it's a little too samey here, so we can combat it with some of the um, the brighter shapes here. So let's just play around till we get something that feels quite mountainy. And it's nice with this sort of textured brush because it allows this to be a little bit more loose. So something like this maybe. I'm not sure why it's... Let's do something like that. And um, yeah, let's just keep going here. So let's say we're happy with this. Maybe we give it a little bit of a glow around the edge here. And a bit darker. Oh. What we can do as well, just to separate, because they're quite the same gray here to here. So if we make a new layer on top and then take a gradient tool and put it to white, uh, I can then with a very low opacity create something like that. And let's actually remove whatever I painted there. So something like that, that just creates a bit more sort of atmosphere there. You know, um, so what else? Well, we can make a new layer on top of here and let's kind of put some marks on the ground here. So it looks a bit like the car drove and let's just make a smaller brush. This can also help to to direct the eye towards the car. So we have these guys coming in from the top, right? Pointing at the car. And then we can create something like this, maybe. And I think we're very close to the ground here. So making the... Um, so these things will grow quite large the closer they come. It's really quite hard to speak and draw at the same time. What we can do now is we can make another layer, um, maybe put it to overlay and use a black color and then just drop the opacity down. And we can start to put in some shadows Maybe the foreground is sort of, maybe there's like a tree above us or something. Can make it a little darker. And then you can use a white color to bring things out as if it's in in highlight. So maybe we put that a bit on the car and just on the ground below it. So that also drags your eye towards it. And then let's put in some pine trees here to take a color here. Orange. 
and these can also kind of you know angle in a little bit just so they so they feel like they're also f following the frame the framing so you don't want them to go like that way because then your eyes will sort of go up this way instead and uh, you can just kind of really simply lay out some shape that represents pine trees maybe there's some further down in the background here Just keep painting these. That's a bit of a messy one. But that's okay. And maybe this one has like a proper, you know, sometimes the all the branches are just on one side if it's been standing in the wind for, for a long time. Maybe two of them overlap a bit. Um, yeah, so these we could obviously paint um, nicer later on as we go into details. This is just suggestions at the moment, just so I have something, you know, to, to sell the composition. And if I zoom out, you can sort of see what the final thing might look like. And I think what we want to do as well, we, we want to add some foreground elements here. So let's take a dark color and, you know, add in some grass because basically what we have in the 3d is um if i put on these cubes which i made um these are all around 10 or 8 centimeters high and if you see over there that's also 8 centimeters and this car is actually two meters which is the original so the foreground actually starts almost over at this plane and then comes towards us so we're very very low with the camera here which you can see so all these things are very small so if it's uh, if this is eight centimeters then that's like a blade of grass right so we're gonna get some crazy depth of field and uh, I don't really feel that here it feels like we're like a meter up so let's try to add in a bit of um, kind of grass suggestive grass here for now just so we have like oh, maybe we don't put them there if that's the road but yeah so just so we get the sense of um, the perspective here and the depth you can use the lasso tool just to create some kind of shapes And that's an easy way to just kind of suggest some stones or something and then let's use a pretty wide brush here and just go over and give this like a grassy texture maybe we have some of these kind of um, some kind of plants and leaves here And yeah, this is obviously, you can spend ages rendering grass later on. But it's nice to just get a little bit of details in, or very early days details. Just so you kind of understand how the scene might work. And I think they help just to sell that we are actually very close to the ground here. So let's add a few on this side too here.
All right, I think we will wrap up this here. It's quite cool how you so quickly can set up the full scene and sort of see where things go. It's obviously not any, or like it has no details yet, but it's, um, it's, it tells the story. It says where things go, where the light comes from. Um, maybe we add a bit more bright light around the car here just so it pops out a bit more later, but you know, that's all rendering and um, decisions that can be taken down the road. But initially, you know, in 10 minutes or something, we can, we can get pretty far. Um, and yeah, I'm really excited to do more of this sort of painting than just rely on the 3D, because I think the 3D is great, but I also want to bring in this slightly graphical tone to it, which I think the painting adds. And the ground plane and stuff, that, that being 3D at the start helps, because I can actually map this back onto, you know, like we've done before with uh, camera mapping and so on. And also it just sets the, the initial um, angle for the camera, things are correct. I have actually a 3D object in there, so it's good to, you know, ground it on some actual 3D, um, you know, ground planes. Um, but yeah, hope this was enjoyable and uh, feel free to subscribe to the channel if you like this type of content. Uh, also check out the Patreon if you fancy um, supporting the channel and you get some of those textures and stuff which we used in here. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.